What's up everyone? Welcome to another edition of The Music Bowl. My name is Herd. I will be your host for today. Uh, Want to start with a quick story actually before I get into the actual topic for the episode. Um, so a few weeks ago I put out an episode about how um, or like the things that musicians can learn from bikers and how communal you know the the bike community is um, so today I'm out on a ride and my goal is to get over to near Scranton Pennsylvania and uh, starting from you know where I was in Middletown and uh, I was gonna be taking all back roads I don't want to be doing highway stuff you know so I had the route programmed in thought I knew where I was going generally speaking and Siri decided to like detour or do some really weird things so I ended up taking a route that I was a little unsure of at least to begin with I was over in New Jersey so I didn't know those roads quite as well and so at one point I pulled over into just some like dirt patch into the side of the road one of those little like pull off things where you can just kind of like park for a minute if you need to um, and I wanted to just double check you know make sure I was still going the right place and I could get to where I wanted to in a timely fashion and I wasn't completely rerouted by hours or something and so nice little lake view for us here pond maybe I don't know what you call it um, <clears throat> of course he pulls out why wouldn't he um, yeah so anyway um, so I'm in this dirt patch parked and another biker <coughs> pardon me another biker actually just pulled over on the side of the road with me and, and just to make sure everything was cool um, and that's definitely not like if I was in a car there's no way anybody's parking next to me it's only because I'm on the motorcycle and you know he was on a motorcycle that someone that he was the reason that's why he stopped and and so you know I just told him like yeah just checking the route making sure I was still you know good to go and um, and then we ended up just talking for a while the dude was um, he was from the area kind of lived in New York or worked in New York City he told me about how he lived overseas for a little while and how the bike he has now is the is the first adventure bike he ever owned and his was new and I was telling how mine was new and it was just cool it was just a cool moment to <clears throat> um, to just have with someone else you know that would not have happened if we were in cars and you know it's just it just highlights again how communal the motorcycle community is um, I don't think that would have happened if he was a young guy because he was I he wasn't like old I mean he might have been in his mid 50s um, but I don't think a 20 or a 30 year old would have pulled over one because I think we're so used to the fact that like we have our phones that can like if we're in a bind we have you know the ability to do that um, and but also so he, because he was older it was probably why he pulled over and was helping um, or tried to help but also I think with the bike community um, it's maybe a little bit more accept or not more acceptable it's just more common that guys know how to do and fix small things on the bike on the fly so he was probably just making sure something didn't need to be fixed that he could help with um, which is super cool super appreciative so just wanted to highlight yet again another facet of the motorbike community that I love so much um, I don't always stop for every biker especially if it's like really scenic stuff and like a lot of times got we just you know we're checking stuff or we're just taking a break or um, but it is cool that every now and because I think one or two bikers did pass me so it wasn't like every biker did stop but it was just cool that someone did and was just checking to make sure that everything was okay so with that let's get into the topic for today's actual video and for the musicians out there listening to just the podcast um, we're not going to be talking music today I've had a few questions about what my vlogging setup is so I figured I would just kind of go through that a little bit today um, I first of all by no means am at all an expert on this stuff I am still just figuring it out as I go um, and I have not been doing that for very long just uh, what is this episode seven eight nine somewhere in there um, so 
by all means continue to look up stuff from people who you know actually know what they're talking about but i'll at least give you my take on everything so um and it is a bit windy today so hopefully it's not causing too much of a problem um and oh i also know that most of the time when these kind of videos come out people are um, you know in their homes with other cameras and stuff kind of walking you through it but it's just not my style so you're gonna have to deal with me just talking about the stuff and like i did figure out how to put it all together <laughs> so um you don't really need that much that's what's kind of cool about this um you obviously need the camera so i got a gopro hero 8 and uh, the reason I went with the 8 is because I did not want to spend the money on the 10. I, I could have, I just didn't want to. Um, it was like an extra 200 bucks for a camera for me that would do the exact same thing. Um, I checked with some of my more cinematically inclined friends and they, uh, they had told me that I, for what I'm going to be doing, which is basically just mount the camera and then hit record and then just like, you know, release that footage. Um, I, I probably also could have got away with like a GoPro 4, 5, 6, 7, any one of those probably would have worked. The reason I went with the 8 was I was afraid that if I went too far back, some of the software updates would stop a lot sooner. Um, so I wanted to make sure I felt like the 8 was a good balance between being not too expensive and still was going to have like good updates and would still be like um in the gopro repertoire for a while so that's why i went with that one um i also ended up getting the media mount or the media mod the gopro media mod and that was like an extra 80 bucks and now the reason for that it's actually super important so if you want to try and keep your helmet light because obviously once you mount the camera it adds a little bit of weight to your helmet um, it's not much it's still a small thing but it does add weight the only way to plug a microphone into a normal GoPro is with this extra like dongle thing that was going to be yet another thing to have to mount onto the helmet. Um, and it's this other big square block that looks kind of ugly and is just more stuff to have to worry about. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so I didn't want to do that. So the only way then to plug a microphone in to it was to get the media mod. Um, and the media mod, actually there's a couple other things that I really like about it. So I do highly recommend that if you're going to start doing this, you get the media mod. Um, it has an eighth inch input, like a mic input on it. So you can plug the mic directly in. Um, it also will allow you to charge your GoPro without having to take the battery or without having to take the side compartment off the GoPro. Because normally, and I, I didn't know any of this until recently when I got it, but normally when you want to charge the GoPro, you have to take the side panel off because that's where the, at least on the GoPro 8, maybe the 9, 10 and whatever model you have is different, but on the 8, you have to take the side panel off to plug in the, the camera so you can charge it. And with the media mod, you can just plug that whole system into the charger. You don't have to take the side panel off anymore, which I, I really like not having to take apart the camera just to charge it. Um, so yeah, so that was, that was super, super helpful. So there's the first two things, the GoPro, whatever model you want, and then the media mod. The media mod also, uh, by the way, basically makes it so that you don't really have to worry about compatibility with the microphones. Um, if, you, if you get the dongle, you have to worry about making sure everything is still gonna be compatible and work, and it's more stuff to mount. So just get the media mod. It, it makes life so much easier and it does have a couple extra microphones on it itself the media mod that is um, so if you are gonna just um, be in a room let's say I were to do this video at my apartment I would be able to just use the onboard mics because they are a little bit higher quality than just the normal um, the normal mic input on the, the GoPro itself anyway so so those are the two things there so and but i feel like you probably knew you had to get those um the next thing that i ended up doing um, was i got a specific mount for the gopro for my helmet um i went through a company called chin mounts and 
uh, one because I had I had seen a couple ads about them, um, but also the few motorbike channels that I was looking at. Um, in, when I was learning how to kind of set all this stuff up also had recommended chin mounts and the beautiful thing it's a great system the way it does the way it works is the the chin mount company designs mounts specific to each helmet so the contours of the helmet are built into the mount itself if you get just the normal standard stock GoPro mount it will work but it's really awkward, especially with my particular helmet. The front kind of comes to like a, a more rounded sort of section with like a point. It's not like a perfectly flat thing that I can just, um, that I can just, you know, put my, the flat surface of the round mount on, like the, the helmet mount. So it makes it a little bit more awkward. Ow, something just hit me. Man, those woods look beautiful too, wow. I am a fan. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, so get a chin mount. Um, you can find your specific helmet on there, um, and then you'll get a mount that will have all the contours and everything kind of built into it, um, which for me made it feel much more safe and secure. Um, the other thing that the chin mount does come with is a safety tether, which is basically just a string that you can also attach to the mount um, and I put it in between the screw um, for the wow 534 for gas holy crap man I'm gonna need it soon too that sucks <laughs> dang <coughs> pardon me oh man that's that's rough that's expensive um, and I'm probably gonna see this in two weeks and be like oh I wish it was still only 534 but whatever um, yeah, so the, it comes with a safety tether, which is, I have it mounted on this side of my helmet. It basically is just a string. Maybe you can see it in the, in the mirror there. You see it flapping around. But all it does is it's just another one of those little circle mounts. And I put it on this side and it just goes around the whole unit. So that way, in case the mount itself does fall off, not the camera, the mount from my chin, if that falls off, there's a second layer of protection with this rope that hopefully it doesn't also fail at the exact same time the chin mount does. Because um, I would hate for my, you know, couple hundred dollar GoPro camera to fall off my helmet and just be destroyed. So this is at least an extra layer. Obviously, in an accident or anything like that, anything severe, it's not going to happen. But for some reason, let's say the mount just I don't know, falls off, a bird comes in, swoops, or something, I don't know, this extra tether will hopefully be a little bit of uh, extra protection against that. So, and that was pretty simple to, uh, to attach. And maybe if, if someone needs to, I, I can show you uh, in a different video of just a quick little thing on Instagram of how I'm mounting that. So, um, yeah. Um, the only really other thing you need for the whole vlogging setup is just the mic and I, there was like a $20 lapel mic that another moto vlogger had recommended. Um, I know the Purple Panda is pretty popular. Wow, the Purple Panda is pretty popular. Ha. Um, but that was a little bit more expensive than a, I was, and I was prepared to pay the 40, 50, 60 bucks, whatever it is. But this other moto vlogger had just recommended this $20 lapel mic. It plugs into the media mod. There's no real issues to it. Um, I have it wired underneath the cheek pad on the right side of my helmet and I also wired it and like just with electrical tape just taped some of the excess cable to the back of my helmet as well so that I didn't have a ton in my cheek mount because I didn't want to have like eight feet of cable in my cheek pushing under my pad so um, I just kind of have it wired around the back of my helmet stuck there with electrical tape the only thing I will say with that is you have to you have to be careful. I can't open my modular helmet and still have the mic plugged in. So I have to like close the close the helmet um, and then plug the mic in because I didn't leave myself enough cable. But I didn't want to because then I'd have a lot of cable just kind of dangling and flapping around, and I didn't want that. So um, <clears throat> that's really that's the whole vlogging setup. Um, uh, I did get I did get. Um, the 
uh, like an extra battery and an extra battery charger and things like that just extra accessories for the gopro but in terms of bare minimal it's just the gopro the chin mount and a 20 dollars lapel mic and i also uh, as a side note i got a two pack of lapel mics or they're called lavalier mics i got a two pack for eight dollars so i have three lapel mics that all cost me less than thirty dollars and they all work fantastic i've tried out the other two they're fine they maybe get a little bit more wind noise than the current one that i have but it's not egregious by any means so ah. freaking bug in my helmet somehow got in my mouth awesome um yeah so it's not like you need some crazy expensive uh, lapel mic or anything extra you don't need the purple panda just get a an eight pack or a, a two pack for eight bucks um, and i can try and find some links and, and put them in the description here for you as well uh, the other thing that i ended up getting which has been one of the most helpful and useful things i've ever gotten was the quad lock mount itself um, i'm sure if you're riding bikes you've probably seen them but it is super helpful hashtag not sponsored uh, you uh, you see how small this channel is no one's sponsoring any of this stuff um but i will say it is it has lived up to what it was supposed to do um and it has been super super helpful i can just from here now beep 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 beep, beep and get stuff in and i have felt very secure with it um i had another mount on my yamaha motorcycle this is my triumph this is skyler um on my yamaha i had another one that i never liked to use it never felt secure i always felt like i was worried about it falling off i've had zero apprehensions with the quad lock after like the first ride obviously that first ride you're always like hey what's going to actually happen it's been great i did get the pro model and i did get the vibration dampener and for my bike for this triumph i did get you can see down in there hopefully i'm pointing the camera correctly uh, you can see this little guy down there is a uh, my din adapter so i can plug the phone in and keep it charging but other than that that's really it now the other thing you need then is some kind of video editing software to actually edit down your videos and like export them and be able to post them wherever you're trying to post them um, i know gopro has their own service but you have to i think you have to pay the subscription for it um, i do enough video stuff that i i pay for adobe premiere but i know you could probably do similar things to what i'm doing with like imovie or any of those general things uh davinci i the first couple of videos um that i recorded and posted on this channel were from davinci and so it worked you could do it you'll notice that the screen's a little bit smaller there's the black outline of it and the problem was with davinci that i noticed was and this is probably just because i'm terrible at it but i couldn't figure out how to import it and export it as like a, a 4k hd video with adobe premiere i noticed whatever i put it in as it comes out as and it only it only takes like you know the 10 20 minutes to export whereas yeah we're definitely getting around this guy by the way that's what we're setting up for um With DaVinci, it was really weird where I could only import it in as like a 1080p for some reason. And again, this is probably just my lack of knowledge of anything. And I had used Adobe Premiere for so long for other stuff that it was, I was trying to just do it for free with DaVinci, but I ended up just paying for Adobe again because it just, it does what it's supposed to do. It does it really well. It's super clean and easy. Um, and DaVinci did not feel like any of those things. So, family fun park that's cool uh yeah so that's that's the setup camera a lavalier mic wire that around the helmet however you really want to mine's a very it's definitely a jerry rig there's tape everywhere but it works um get them out so you can like just touch screen from here to start and stop your recordings a lot easier that's pretty much it it's a very simple setup um and you know again just as with everything just watch a couple other youtubers see exactly what they're doing if you add in a second mic i know you'll see a lot of the guys will have another mic pointed back at you you can add that in um i i will eventually i just didn't want to spend the money on yet another camera that i didn't have if i already had one 
you know, from years ago, I would have bought a second one and done it that way, but I, I didn't want to have to buy two brand new cameras at one time. So that's, man, it was windy spot through there. Um, so that was why uh, you're only getting the one camera view for now. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Camera, mount, way to edit it. Um, you need to be able to export the video and the audio, by the way. Um, well, that's not entirely true. If you're doing a podcast like I'm doing, you have to make, make sure you can also export audio only to, act, to post online somewhere as a, a podcast. But um, video-wise, Adobe, iMovie, any of those things are going to work. Um, I'm sure if you try a little bit harder than I did, you can even make DaVinci work. So um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you need like pictures or a more of a visual explanation let me know and maybe i can i'll try and make a standalone video again with like the visuals for all the components um or i can post some stuff um on the ig page um and just kind of give everyone maybe a more of the visual but um that's really all it was um i watched a couple of people talking on their rides about what they have they had the links underneath i could check stuff out um, so i'll try and do that as well um, they're not going to be affiliate links or any of that stuff. So if you did find this useful and you do want to like support me in some way, uh, just reach out and I'll let you know how you can do that. Um, but yeah, hope this is helpful. Um, I'll let it go here. Oh, there's a lake right here. What a good way to end. Woo, that view. Ah, that's right. We're in Pennsylvania. You don't have to wear a helmet. So if that's the case, if you're in a state without a helmet, find another way to mount all this gear. <laughs> I think, um, I know a lot of the guys too will mount, you know, on the bike, on the handlebar, the tires, things like that. You can go crazy with that. Uh, mine was just super easy. Chin mount, boom. So, um, but yeah, thanks for checking this video out. Hopefully it was helpful. If you need more information, please let me know. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening.